Hi everyone, Kevin Brown. Today we're going to talk about the mean and the standard deviation. I have two variables here, temperature and ice cream sales. I've got some data for each. So what does it mean to find the mean and the standard deviation for each of these? As we might remember, the formula for the mean is the sum of the index of all x values divided by the sample size. When we're going to the standard deviation, we're taking the sum of those x values minus their mean, and then we're squaring that, dividing by n minus 1, and then we're taking the square root of that. Now, there are many different ways of doing this, but I want to show you one particular method that's helpful just in case you need to go back and check your work. It's very simple. It might be a little more math, a little longer than it might take if you were skipping a few steps, but again, it's a very good way to go back and actually check your math, make sure you didn't make a simple mistake. So let's go ahead and start with the temperature. If I wanted to find the mean of the temperature, I'm simply adding up 68, 72, 77, 84, 83, 71, 65, and 70. So the sum of the index of x values. And if I add that up, that actually equals 588. Next, I'm going to divide that by the sample size. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm taking 588 divided by 8. If I do that, that gives me an average value of 73.5. One of the things I'm always keen to tell our students is, once you get any answer, whether it's an answer to something really simple like this, or it's an answer to a very complex problem, put your pen down, put your pencil down, put your calculator down, stop for a minute, and just give it the logic test. Based on this set of values that I see before me, does it make sense that the average temperature, the average value, would be 73.5? Based upon what I see here, yeah, that makes sense. So we can, we can move forward. Now, as mentioned, when I'm finding the standard deviation, there are many different ways of doing this, but let me propose this method. And I'm going to go ahead and write across the top the things that I need to know in order to move forward and solve this particular problem. Obviously, I'm going to have to know my index of x values, which we already know. I'm going to have to know the mean, which we solved. But I'm going to have to know my x values minus my mean. And then I'm going to have to go one more step and know the sum of my x values minus the mean squared. And by sum, that means I'm going to add all those up and take the difference at the bottom. And that's going to be enough information to give me my numerator in this particular problem. So let's go ahead and do this for temperature. We've got 68, 72, 77, 84, 83, 71, 65, and 70. And as I mentioned before, my mean is 73.5. So I'm going to write this all the way down. Next, I have my column where I'm taking the difference between my x value and its actual mean. So as you can see, this is kind of getting at how much variation is there in this particular data set. It's one thing to have a mean, but it's another thing to know how much variation there is. The example I tend to give in class is we might think of two basketball players that both average 20 points a game. Does that mean they're just as good as each other? Not necessarily. One of those basketball players could average anywhere between zero points a game and 40 points a game, where he or she plays really well. The other player, though, could have a much more consistent skill set, where they're averaging somewhere between, say, 15 or 25 or even 18 and 22 points a game. Both have the same mean. But obviously, as a coach, if you're recruiting that player, you want the player that's going to be more consistent. So it's one thing to have a mean. It's another thing to look at the variation. So that's what we're getting at when we're looking at the difference between the x value and that particular mean. So let's look at these differences. This is a difference of negative 7.5, negative 1.5, positive 3.5, 10.5, 9.5, negative 
negative 8.5 and negative 3.5. Now, we don't want to make the mistake and sum this because we'll always get zero. And we'll always get zero because think about what we're doing. We're summing the difference between an x value and its mean. Rather, we want to square these values to make them all positive, and then we want to sum that. So if we square this, we get 56.25, 2.25, and again, I'm squaring this particular column right here, 12.25, 1.25, ninety point two five six point two five seventy two point two five and twelve point two five and this is the column that I actually want to sum and if I do sum that adding all of these up I get a value of three hundred and sixty two and this is the value up here for our numerator three sixty two n minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, is 7. So we want the square root of 362 divided by 7. So that's the same thing as saying the square root of 51.71. And if I were to take the square root of that, I get 7.19. So for temperature, I found that my mean is 73.5 with a standard deviation of 7.19 degrees. Now, one other component I want to point out here. By taking the square root, I'm taking this value that was initially squared and putting it back into similar terms as the initial unit value. So now it's an apples to apples. Otherwise, if I were to have the squared value, it's kind of hard to compare that to my initial value for the variable. But by taking the, stand, or the square root of that, I'm bringing it back into its same unit value. Thanks so much.